Okay, I think I'm going to get going. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Asher, and I'm head of design at E1 Series. And I'm very excited to be talking to you a little bit about what E1 is all about and a little bit about what I do. Um, so, to get things going, this is the agenda for my little segment today. Um, so I'm going to give a quick intro to E1 and explain what E1's all about. Uh, I'm then going to give a little bit of background, talk about some of my experience uh, in a few different roles in design. Uh, I'm then going to cover my process for crafting what we call a key visual, which is um, a race poster, or some people call it a hero asset. Uh, I'm going to do a very quick section talking about some design considerations, and then I'm going to show you what key visuals look like out there in the real world at races. So, intro to E1. I've got a little video to show you. So, Welcome to a new era of competition. The beginning of a new standard. What? A new race. One like no one has ever seen, because it's never existed quite like this. Actually, never like this. Proven winners in their respective fields, all champions. Hmm. When all we can do is everything under the sun to give our team and fans that hope that on any given day, we will prevail. Welcome to the dawn of a new era of excellence and greatness. Where guts matter. And here comes Ordonez. Precision is everything. Passion is a given. And winning is a must. Let's go. There we go. So that's, thank you very much. Thank you. So that's just a little flavor of what E1 series is all about. Um, I don't know who's in charge of scheduling the talks, but it's, I think, perfect timing. We were looking at spaceships just before, uh, and lots of people call the boats that we race with uh, real spaceships. So um, what's the point? What is E1 all about? So water is the driving force of all nature. I think it's something like 70% of the whole planet of Earth is covered by oceans, lakes, rivers. Uh, so water really was the starting point for E1. So we're a new global sport. E1 is part of the same family as Formula E, which is electric uh, cars racing in streets all over the world, and Extreme E, which is electric cars that race uh, in extreme locations like deserts and jungle and the Arctic. Um, so the boat you can see there, that's our boat that we race with. We call it the Race Bird. Um, it's got a 35 kilowatt battery, a top speed of uh, 90 kilometers an hour. Um, they're pretty big. When you see them in person, they're, they're much bigger than they come across on screen. Um, and this is what the boat looks like inside. So I joined E1 when it was a startup, and my role was to work on all of the visuals showing what the vehicle looks like. Uh, which is when I started learning Blender. So everything you're going to see in this presentation was all made using Blender. Uh, so you can see that the, the green parts there are what, are what make the boat fly. Um, they're known as hydrofoils. So some people in this room might be f familiar with sail GP. Uh, foils are what make boats lift out of the water when they're at a top speed. Uh, and we use the exact same technology. So you've got two foils either side of the boat and one at the rear that helps control the direction. Uh, another thing that sets E1 apart is that the boat is 100% electric, which means that we're a sustainable sport, so we're not causing damage where we race by using traditional things like uh, oil, petrol, diesel engines. Those are our current team owners. We have nine team owners at E1. Hopefully, there are some familiar faces there. Um, we can have 12 teams in the championship. We've just signed a couple of very big names. 
which I'm sadly not allowed to mention yet, but they're definitely people you'll know. Uh, we've got Will Smith, he was our most recent team. Um, Tom Brady, you'll hopefully recognize. Aoki, Rafa, Checo. So those are what the, the team boats look like. Um, all very different designs, and part of my role is working with each separate team to work on their branding, their livery, what does their team brand look like. And those are some logos. Aoki, Checo, Drogba, Virat Kohli, Tom Brady, uh, Team Brazil, Team Miami, Rafa, and Will Smith. And another interesting point is that E1 has mixed gender pilots. So every team has a male and a female pilot. Uh, we call them pilots, not drivers, because the boats, as I said, they technically fly above the water. Um, and so part of trying to be a, a futuristic sport and a sustainable sport is that the sport is also open to everyone. So traditionally, motorsport has been perhaps male-dominated, but E1, we have males and females racing side by side on each team. Um, and it's worth noting some of these guys on the screen um, are world champions in their respective fields. So we've got powerboat champions, jet ski champions, um, all different disciplines, and then they come and learn how to race the race bird. So here are some shots. There's Rafa getting into his race bird. That was in Venice. Um, you can see we've got the red one here. That's Will Smith's boat racing Tom Brady's boat. Uh, that was some chaos down in Monaco. Uh, the image on the left that you can see was on the Red Sea in Saudi. Uh, so we raced in somewhere called Jeddah at the start of this year. That was our very first race. Um, the middle shot you can see, that's what happens when the foils kick in. So when the boat picks up enough speed, the foils lift the hull out of the water. And the advantage of that is that the race bird then is faster, um, it's smoother, there's no drag, so we're not disrupting the, all the life under, under the water. Um, and you can see that the branding goes into everything, so that all the teams have their own branded helmets, race suits, overalls. Uh, so it's quite a big job working across nine different teams, looking after all their branding. Uh, some more shots there. Shots from Venice and Jeddah again. And then this is just a little flavor of what I mentioned about E1 being a sustainable sport. So a key pillar is that everywhere that we race, we try and leave some form of positive impact, whether it's working with a local charity or having panel discussions similar to the talks that are going on today. Um, to raise awareness for issues around coastal health, um, regenerating the waters where we race. Um, so the whole point really is to be a spectacle on the water, but it's also something good. So that's a quick intro to E1. I'm aware I've only got 20 minutes, so I'm going to talk quite quickly. A very quick background on me. Uh, as I said, I'm head of design at E1. I've got quite a mixed background in design, so I started out in architecture and interior design, which is where I learned 3D and CAD. Uh, I then somehow ended up working in marketing and advertising and fashion before I then found E1, which is for sure my passion. Um, I think if you are here today, you have an interest in technology uh, and design, and I think that over overlaps massively with things like racing and sport and innovation. Um, this was the very first thing I made in Blender. It was a short animation just when I joined. The only thing that existed before this was some still renders of the boat, which I'd seen. Uh, so I got my hands on the CAD file, said I'm going to have a play in Blender, see if I can use it. And this is just a very short clip I made to try and get some people excited about what the race bird might end up looking like. Uh, so this was all rendered in cycles. Very quick clip. Um, so here are some examples of some concept art I did when we were talking to team owners and cities and trying to get them excited about what E1 uh, could be and what it could have to offer. 
Um, so quite stylized, quite moody, showing, showing cities in the background, lots of Star Wars inspiration with the lighting and the speed. Uh, this was a teaser announcement for Will Smith when we announced his team. This was a piece of motion graphics when we launched our website that played on scroll. So as you scroll down the page, the boat had a nice little moving animation. This was some very fun work branding the livery for, we called it Proto 2. So it was the first proper time the roast bird came out the factory, went on the water. What does it look like? I've just seen Top Gun Maverick, and I was very inspired by the Dark Star uh, jet plane they had, so I did something similar. And then we were actually in the Netherlands last year for a demo event where those liveries hit the water um, and they flew under the Erasmus Bridge for a demonstration, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we did a silver version as well, which is now our championship livery, so everywhere that we race, we take a showboat with us which looks like that. There it is in Venice, and there's Tom Brady signing a miniature version. Uh, this was a showboat designed for Jeddah, so we also do a specific showboat that travels to each race uh, that honors the location that we're in. So that was a Jeddah livery I designed. There it is on location. Uh, and I've used Blender for all, all kinds of different things. So this was the launch um, of all three electric championships coming together uh, which is called the Electric 360. Uh, and the night before, someone realized we had no visual to show. So I put something together very quickly for that. Um, that was the key visual for the Rotterdam demo I mentioned. Um, I tried to hide the flag in there, obviously, and I think some people saw it and then asked for the actual flag of Rotterdam, which is green, white, green. Uh, so we had two versions, and they went out in print, newspapers, digital out of home um, all over the city, which is very exciting. And then this was our most recent piece of work, which was um, announcing our first race of season two next year, which is going to be at the Pearl in Doha. Um, so there was a key visual for that. But we're gonna be talking about the visuals that have been used for this season, season one. Uh, so this was the Venice poster. So that's my background. How do, we, how do I go about crafting a key visual? Um, so for me, the most important thing and where I spend my most time is always looking at reference imagery. Um, I look at all kinds of different things, movie posters, travel posters, game design, like the talk that we just had. And from each of those different, different areas, I feel like you can pull lots of different uh, details, whether that be colors, composition, art direction, lighting, typography, you can see an image, hate everything, but maybe there's one little nugget that you like and you can take that into your work. Um, this is showing how many different versions we play around with before we land on something that we like. So there was weeks and weeks and weeks of playing around until we found the lighting, the composition, the angle uh, that we felt worked for E1 to be a hero visual that could carry for a whole season. So I'm going to go, I'll go through what it looks like in Blender quite quickly. Um, I'm by no means the most technically gifted or um, skilled in Blender, um, but hopefully there's some tips or, or some broader ideas that you might pick up. Um, so I like to keep the composition very simple, reason being it's quite often the case that we'll have to announce a race location very last minute, which means turning around work very quickly, which is best done by just replacing the background and swapping out some livery textures. Um, so this was for Venice. There's a water plane. We've got three boats with some water splashes behind them, a, the famous Rialto Bridge in the middle, and then there's a building back plate and then a sky texture behind. Uh, so with all the materials on in preview mode, you can see that's kind of what it looks like. So it's incredibly simple. Uh, sun lamp, those are the water splashes. 
and there's a very strong spotlight behind, uh, which I worked out was the best way quickly to, in camera, get some sense of speed with some energy lines. Um, I was looking at Tron, and I loved all of the blue lines that give that sense of, sense of speed. Uh, so a spotlight at the back, ramped up to very high power, was the best way to do that. Um, and it doesn't look very impressive until you go into camera mode. There you can see the spotlight blocking, making those nice streaks. There they are again. Um, so there it is in camera mode on an angle. Um, and I play around with some compositing for some, some glare, some distortion, some lens flare, some streaks. Um, so this is, the base, this is the render as it comes out, so not overly impressive. Um, so something I always do is take it into Photoshop and play around with the camera raw settings. Um, I recently just discovered if you make your image a smart object, everything you do in camera raw, you can go back and change, uh, which I feel like an idiot for not knowing sooner. Um, but that's what the render comes out looking like, playing around with things like texture, clarity, detail, sharpening. You get something like that, which I think makes a world of difference. Um, the style is, of course, not photorealistic. We want to be kind of on the it's playful, um, almost like game design posters. Um, so that's what the render comes out looking like. That it, that's it once it's graded with all the, all the tweaks made. Put some gradient layers on the top and the bottom just to soften them slightly. And then the text element goes on, which includes things like the championship name, the race logo, our tagline, dates, CTAs, all that stuff. Um, for each race, we always work in different dimensions, so this is for social. Uh, there's a, another dimension for in-feed, and then there's a wide version that goes on things like huge print banners, uh, website banners. Um, so that's, that's how I craft key visual. Um, a few quick design considerations. So these are some things that, as I said, I'm not the most technically gifted, but I think I have an OK sense of what makes something interesting. And I think a few of these things help towards that. So the rule of odds, um, odd numbers in visual compositions always make for a more interesting visual. They create subconscious tension and force greater focus. Um, so as you can see, there's three boats, kind of creates a a triangle subconsciously, it feels like it's driving forwards. Um, if you're interested, Google rule of odds, you'll see loads of images in photography, um, and there's night and day difference having odd numbers in your compositions. Um, employ the golden section whenever possible. Um, the subconscious familiarity of the shape that's found throughout nature helps things feel right. Um, I've said feeling is important because oftentimes people struggle to explain why they like something or dislike something. Um, but being close to shapes and compositions found in nature oftentimes feels right to people. They can't quite put their finger on it, but it, it does just work. Um, this is a favorite quote of mine. Study nature, love nature, stay close to nature, it will never fail you. And that was said by Frank Lloyd Wright, famous architect. I've got one more for you. I believe in God, only I spell it nature. Also Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, so just as a test, that's the golden section, or the Fibonacci spiral, whatever you want to call it. I overlaid it onto the Venice poster, which I hadn't done beforehand. And you can see the nice curve at the top follows the curve of the bridge. The, the end of the spiral lands right on the nose of the boat. Um, so you can see, without even trying, if you work on an image and it feels kind of balanced and it feels kind of right, oftentimes it's because it's following principles like this. Um, I also think it's really important to include movement in your work, wherever it makes sense, of course. Um, people are hardwired to 
their eyes jump to motion. It's part of our survival instinct. So if you can put some movement into your work, it makes an image much more interesting. So you can see there's all kinds of movement going on in these images. You've got the, the boats flying forwards, the, the blue streaks, the, the motion blur of the, the background elements. Uh, and the last point is, I think an interesting visual always tells a story, um, which is a silent dialogue between you and your work and the audience. Uh, it makes it more engaging and it makes it more memorable. Um, so I've said one, two, three there, but obviously there's some sense of a race, there's a sense of a winner, people fighting for position. It just makes things a little bit more interesting. So those are some design considerations for you. And here are some examples. So those are the Venice posters, the E1 Venice GP. Uh, we raced in Marbella in a place called Puerto Benus. Those were the posters for that. Um, oftentimes, we're not given copyright-free imagery to use in the background, so that whole backplate was AI-generated. Um, they've got a famous sculpture there, you can see, called the Victory, the Victory Statue, uh, which was a challenge to create, but we made it work. That's some of the, the visuals on some flags in the port. Those are the Monaco posters. Monaco was another one. We had a very quick turnaround. The local authority, we couldn't get hands on copyright for imagery that worked, so that was actually a photo taken on an iPhone from someone on our team. Uh, dropped into Blender, ended up in the key visual, and that key visual went all over Monaco, print, digital, banners, website, social media, uh, all kinds of publications. Um, which is crazy to think about. There it is on site, so that's the back of house on location in Monaco. Uh, that was the airport, so if you flew into Monaco or Nice in uh, September when we raced, you'd see the key visual everywhere. And this was the one for Lake Como at a famous, um, a beautiful place called Villa Deste. And it was also used on our ticketing site. And those, those are the most recent examples. Um, so thank you very much for listening. I hope it was interesting. I hope there was something that you learned from it. And I'm aware we're not really supposed to do a Q&A, but if anyone has any questions about anything I've spoken about or my work or E1, uh, please come and grab me. I'd love to have a, have a little chat. Thank you for the time.